For thousands of years, the frozen remains of massive, elephant-like creatures have been unearthed worldwide, sparking curiosity and debate. Mammoths and mastodons were two of the most recognizable giants of the Ice Age, their enormous frames and towering tusks making them seem like twin relics of a lost world. Yet despite their similar appearance, they were distinct species with unique adaptations that shaped their survival. These ancient titans walked the same lands, yet they lived in separate worlds, one built for the icy tundra, the other for dense forests. Their differences went far beyond just size or shape. They had unique diets, behaviors, and survival strategies that set them apart in ways you might not expect. So, what truly separated a mammoth from a mastodon? Mammoths were generally larger and more slender compared to mastodons. The largest species, the Columbian mammoth, or Mammothus columbi, stood up to 4 meters or 13 feet tall at the shoulder and could weigh around 10 to 12 metric tons, making it one of the biggest land mammals of its time. The famous woolly mammoth, or Mammothus primigenius, though slightly smaller, still reached around 2.7 to 3.4 meters or 9 to 11 feet tall and weighed between 5 to 8 tons. Mastodons, by contrast, were shorter and stockier. The American mastodon, or Mammoth americanum, the best known species, typically stood around 2.5 to 3 meters or 8 to 10 feet tall and weighed 4 to 6 tons. While still huge by modern standards, mastodons had a more compact and muscular build, better suited for life in dense forests where agility and strength were more important than long-distance travel. One of the key distinctions in their body shape was the back profile. Mammoths had a high arched back, with a prominent shoulder hump caused by elongated vertebrae and thick fat reserves. This adaptation was especially crucial for surviving in Ice Age climates as it allowed them to store energy for harsh winters. Mastodons, on the other hand, had a flatter back with a more uniform height, giving them a sturdier, more grounded appearance. This lower, more level body structure helped them navigate through heavily wooded areas where their bulk was better suited for foraging on trees and shrubs. The shape of their skulls further emphasized their differences. Mammoths had high domed skulls, similar to modern elephants, which provided space for large jaw muscles suited for grinding tough grass. Mastodons, by contrast, had longer, lower skulls that were more primitive in design. Their flatter skull shape suggests a different jaw structure, designed for a powerful bite needed to process twigs, branches, and bark. Their tusks were another major distinction. Mammoths had long, curved tusks, with some individuals sporting tusks that could reach an astonishing 5 meters or 16 feet in length. The curvature of mammoths' tusks varied by species with woolly mammoths having more dramatically curved tusks, possibly for digging through snow and ice to reach buried vegetation. Colombian mammoths had slightly straighter tusks, but they were still far longer and more curved than those of mastodons. Mastodon tusks were shorter, thicker, and less curved, generally growing around 2.5 meters or 8 feet in length. Unlike mammoth tusks, which were sometimes used for fighting and dominance displays, Mastodon tusks were likely more useful for breaking tree branches and stripping bark in line with their browsing diet. Perhaps the most crucial physical difference between mammoths and mastodons was in their teeth, which directly reflected their diet and feeding habits. Mammoths were grazers, meaning they primarily fed on grasses, much like modern elephants. Because grass is tough and wears down teeth quickly, mammoths evolved large, flat molars with parallel ridges designed for grinding vast amounts of fibrous plant material. Their teeth were replaced several times throughout their lives as older molars wore down and new ones grew in from the back of the jaw. Mastodons, in contrast, were browsers, meaning they ate leaves, twigs, bark, and even fruits. Their molars were completely different, conical and cusped, resembling those of carnivores more than modern elephants these sharp, raised cusps allowed them to crush and chew woody plants, which required more force than simply grinding down grass. Unlike mammoths, whose teeth were specialized for endurance grazing, mastodon's teeth were better adapted for breaking apart tougher plant material. This dietary difference was a major factor in shaping their habitats and lifestyles. 
Mammoths were built for open landscapes, thriving in vast grasslands, steppes, and tundra regions. They were found across North America, Europe, and Asia, with different species adapted to different climates. Their migration patterns followed the expansion of Ice Age grasslands, allowing them to survive in harsh climates by constantly moving to find new food sources. Mastodons, on the other hand, were forest dwellers. They primarily lived in North and Central America, favoring densely wooded environments where they could browse on leaves, twigs, and bark. Fossil evidence suggests that mastodons were particularly abundant in regions with temperate and boreal forests, where they could find ample tree cover and food. Unlike mammoths, which adapted to open landscapes, mastodons thrived in swampy and forested areas, which provided them with plenty of woody vegetation to eat. Mammoths and mastodons also had very different social structures and movement patterns. Like modern elephants, mammoths lived in large matriarchal herds, where older females led groups of related individuals. Fossilized trackways and bone beds suggest that mammoth herds were highly organized, moving in predictable migration patterns and using collective memory to locate seasonal food sources. Their ability to migrate was crucial for survival, especially for woolly mammoths, which endured harsh winters in the Ice Age tundra. Mastodons, in contrast, likely had a more solitary or small group lifestyle. Evidence from fossilized remains suggests that adult male mastodons, much like modern-day bull elephants, often lived alone or in small groups, while females may have formed loose family units. Their home ranges were also much smaller than those of mammoths, as forests provided a stable and localized food supply that did not require long-distance migration. For thousands of years, mammoths and mastodons thrived across North America, Europe, and Asia, adapting to harsh climates and competing with other Ice Age megafauna. However, despite their long history of success, both species met the same fate. Extinction One of the primary causes of their extinction was climate change at the end of the Pleistocene epoch around 12,000 years ago. This period marked the transition from the Ice Age to the Holocene bringing dramatic shifts in temperature, precipitation, and ecosystems. For mammoths, particularly the woolly mammoth, the warming climate was disastrous. The vast grasslands they depended on, known as the Mammoth Steppe, began to shrink as forests expanded in the warming conditions. With fewer open plains and more competition for food, their populations started to decline. Mastodons, despite being more adapted to forested environments, were not immune to these changes. Rising temperatures and shifting precipitation patterns reduced the availability of their preferred food sources, making survival increasingly difficult. Unlike mammoths, which had evolved in open environments, could migrate long distances in search of food. Mastodons were less mobile and more dependent on specific types of vegetation, making them more vulnerable to habitat loss. While climate change played a significant role, the arrival of early human hunters was likely the final blow for both species. The overkill hypothesis suggests that as humans spread across the world, they systematically hunted large animals to extinction. Evidence shows that early human groups, including the Clovis people in North America, actively hunted both mammoths and mastodons. Archaeological sites have revealed spear points embedded in fossilized bones, suggesting that these animals were a crucial food source for Ice Age humans. Mastodons living in more forested environments may have been especially vulnerable to human hunting. Once humans reached North America, mastodon populations appeared to have declined rapidly, with little evidence of them surviving beyond 10,500 years ago. Mammoths, on the other hand, persisted for a little longer. While most populations vanished around 10,000 years ago, some isolated groups survived in remote locations. The most famous of these was a small population of woolly mammoths on Wrangell Island, an isolated Arctic island north of Siberia. These mammoths managed to survive until about 4,000 years ago, meaning they were still around when the pyramids of Egypt were being built. However, they eventually succumbed due to genetic inbreeding, habitat loss, and possibly even human hunting. Some scientists have also suggested that disease may have contributed to the extinction of mammoths and mastodons. As human populations expanded, they may have introduced new pathogens that these animals had no immunity against. While this theory is still debated, it remains a possibility that diseases played a secondary role in weakening already struggling populations. 
Additionally, competition with other Ice Age megafauna may have intensified during the end of the Pleistocene. Species like bison, deer, and horses, which were more adaptable to changing climates, may have outcompeted mammoths and mastodons for food. Carnivores like dire wolves and saber-toothed cats also depended on these large herbivores as prey, and as mammoth and mastodon numbers dwindled, predator populations may have collapsed as well. Despite their extinction, mammoths and mastodons continue to fascinate scientists and the public alike. Their frozen remains, preserved in permafrost, have provided extraordinary insights into their biology, diet, and interactions with humans. In recent years, there has even been talk of bringing woolly mammoths back through cloning and genetic engineering, with scientists attempting to insert mammoth DNA into Asian elephants to create a hybrid species that could live in Arctic conditions. Mastodons, though less famous than mammoths, remain one of the most important Ice Age mammals in North American prehistory. Their fossils continue to be discovered across the continent, often revealing clues about the ecosystems they once inhabited. While they may be gone, their role in shaping Ice Age landscapes and human history remains undeniable. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.